Oh, all right. OK, guys, uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is uh, Badruddin Kassib from Microsoft. Uh, I work in uh, the compute uh, infrastructure in Azure. With me is Brian Kelly. He's also uh, from Azure, uh, compute infrastructure. Uh, the topic of today is the security, hardware security, uh, as you can tell. Um, we have only 15 minutes. I'll try to uh, go as fast as I could. If you have any questions, we will sit after the 15 minutes over there and we can answer any questions you have. OK, so this is uh, obligatory marketing stuff. So you know we gave uh, the Project Olympus hardware is open, open source, both hardware and software. Uh, we want to try just to create an ecosystem, hardware ecosystem. Uh, it covers anywhere from compute, motherboards, Intel, AMD, ARM, uh, storage, hard drives, and flash, networking as well. Uh, we have the FPGA, or uh, what we call is the accelerated uh, networking. OK, so one year ago, we pro proposed Cerberus. And the rationale for Cerberus is what you see on this slide. We have lots of um, hardware infrastructure that is really unsecured. Uh, and there are lots of attack surfaces. Uh, this is kind of uh, sample just in the last 12 months. Uh, UFI root kits, the meltdown, Spectre and meltdown, the, uh, the uh, whatever, I don't want to mention the country, there is a uh, physical attack where somebody can interpose a chip and, and essentially route all the bits somewhere else, okay? Uh, so, If we look at all the threats in the data center, uh, essentially they are two, either firmware software based or they are hardware physical tampering type of attacks. Uh, if you look at the firmware assets in the motherboard, it ranges from the BIOS, BMC, uh, FPGAs, SSDs, and name it. Uh, the list goes on, right? Uh, the hardware on the other side, there are lots of chips. Somebody could either could interpose another chip in the middle and do whatever the route, route your inter internet, I mean your communication to, to uh, another uh, data center or another country, right? Uh, or, or he can actually put a chip that is fake chip that replaces your chip and it behaves like your chip, but it adds other functionality that you don't need, okay? So because of all of this, we propose servers. Brian Kelly was actually leading the Cerberus uh, of the security forum in OCP. He's going to talk about the, what we've done so far in the Cerberus V1. Okay. So I'll give a little bit of the genesis on, on Cerberus and uh, what underpinned uh, the design and why we went about it. So there were two specifications that were really influential on that. Um, the first was this. Uh, uh, platform firmware resiliency guidelines from NIST, which is the 800-193. And that has essentially three pillars in it. It talks about uh, protection, detection, and recovery of firmware. Um, when we looked at that, we also um, had the Cloud Security Alliance publish what it means to have firmware integrity. So using these two specifications um, gel together, they talk about uh, authentication of firmware integrity, uh, how you would test uh, firmware, how you detect compromises and corruption, and then, of course, how you recover from that. So that was the basis in which we based the Cerberus design. Um, from it, we came out with Cerberus. So what is Cerberus? Cerberus was a set of platform requirements on how you would securely power sequence and establish trust early in boot a set of component requirements for firmware integrity and attestation and taking those measurements. And then uh, the third thing was a chip that implements all three, all, all of those requirements. Now, the, the chip alone fits into a broader architecture uh, that forms a platform rooted thrust. And this is a, a, a hierarchical um, architecture where we have a master rooted thrust responsible for enforcement of policies, both attestation and security policies on firmware. Then we have uh, delegates or component uh, roots and thrusts out on the actual components 
that report back to this master controller on the baseboard. And um, they enforce uh, uh, secure boot. They enforce attestation pre-boot, during boot, at runtime. So at any point in time in the life cycle of a product, we understand the integrity of firmware. Um, move on. So the Cerberus controller itself, I'll talk a little bit about what that is. So it's a microcontroller, a dedicated microcontroller that has uh, internal secure RAM, it's secure flash, uh, contains the, some crypto blocks uh, for um, acceleration, uh, SHA, AES, a true random number generator, and a public key accelerator for sign verify on RSA and uh, ECC. Has some one-time programmable memory for revocation of firmware and authentication of its, its firmware. It also has a, uh, a physically unclonable function, a puff, for some entropy. That, along with a true random number generator, forms, forms some en entropy that we use for key derivation. And uh, it follows the DICE ar architecture, which is a TCG uh, standard. Uh, in addition to that, the Cerberus microcontroller does interpose between a CPU and its firmware load store to maintain integrity at, for, at that firmware, both pre-boot and at runtime. So in order to, to facilitate that, it has some hardware IP blocks that uh, interpose and filter all spy traffic, read, writes, takes measurements at runtime to uh, help us know what's going across that bus. Uh, it's deployed, I should say that the, the Cerberus uh, microcontroller is deployed on uh, Olympus platforms. So you can see a demonstration of that in our, in our booth where we, uh, we have that Cerberus microcontroller talking out and, and monitoring the firmware integrity on some uh, SSDs in that platform. So this is back over. Yeah. Okay, so as, as Brian mentioned, so Starting from our current generation motherboards, uh, we have implemented already servers on the motherboard, on the enclosures like SSDs, the hard drive enclosures. Any product we ship, we have servers implemented in it. So after we did servers v1, and the committee did a very good job, so the specs are already almost complete, so there is some work to be done, but I think we are almost there. So the question uh, was, okay, what's next? And what are what does Cerberus cover and does not cover? Cerberus V1. So one of, the, uh, one of the problems we have to solve with the next Cerberus, or Cerberus Next, is standardizing secure boot. Mm -hmm. We noticed as we worked with our partners and we started digging deeper and deeper into, OK, how do you secure boot? How, what are the process? What's involved? We've seen lots of gaps and lots of variations, and some of them are not secure, to be, to be honest with you. So we need to standardize secure boot. Okay, that's goal number one. Uh, the other one is physical intrusion. So uh, Cerberus V1 does a good job at doing attestation, but if somebody goes to the motherboard and route the, the um, he can do essentially, he can bypass servers, right? But it's required physical intrusion. Uh, now, in current, the current state of hardware, uh, of, uh, hardware security and supply chain security, we do lots of things to make sure that doesn't happen, right? But we want to make sure that we don't have to do that in the future, that the hardware should be tamper-proof, okay? Uh, the next point is uh, we want extra fu functionality in servers. We want key management. We want to be able to store keys. We want to be able to store software and firmware measurements. We want to be able also to, to do some key manipulation, advanced like uh, wrapping keys, key derivation functions, and so on, OK? Uh, and obviously, the last one is su supply chain security. So, and I mentioned that. So when we ship hardware, it goes through, I don't know how. It stays for months and months, right, in the ship. There are lots of opportunities to tamper with the hardware. So we want to make sure that the hardware is tamper-proof to a certain extent. OK, so here is what Cerberus Next looks like. And if you paid attention to the original slide, the root of trust sitting outside the chips. We are moving the root of trust inside the silicon itself. 
So we have to have silicon integrated root of trust. That's number one requirement in the next servers. Uh, and it should be compatible with servers v1. That goes without saying. Uh, we want to enhance features. Like I mentioned, we want to have secure key storage, measurement storage. We want to have advanced key management, like I said. Um, be able to wrap keys, to derive keys from other keys, and so on. And it's, it needs to be open design. Uh, uh, and the reason is we want to make sure that all the silicon ecosystem take advantage of it. And it should be standardized in center fashion. By open design, I mean open firmware. So the firmware itself will be shared. And we will make sure from Microsoft side, we will donate all the servers v1 software. But also, we want to push hard for an open RTL. So it should be a library of, of servers next where you can take it and you put it in your silicon and it should work with the minimum uplift. So that's at least the goal uh, so far. OK. Um, what is needed? So we're going to start in the security, uh, OCP security forum, the discussion on OCP uh, on the servers next. Um, and obviously, we want to complete servers v1 spec. Uh, and, and so we want to make sure that all the feedback from the silicon vendors and for the, the system design uh, community is all integrated in the servers v1, but as also in the servers next. Um, finally, we have a. We have demos of servers v1 on our booth and in some of our partner booths. Make sure you visit. And you can look how, how does servers work and how does it protect against, against uh, um, attacks. OK. All right. All right, thank you. Next. Hey. We'll, we'll sit next here. If anybody has a question, we'll sit on that side and come by and ask your questions. Thanks.